This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones here. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host, and uh, we're glad to have him with us today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. His number one best-selling book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is still zooming and zooming and zooming, as well as his podcast. So if you want to talk about your life and your money, we're here. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. 888-825-5225. David's going to start us off in Amarillo, Texas. Hi, David. How are you? Pretty good, Dave. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, uh, I have recently remarried about three years ago and uh, was very near debt free. And my wife, after we got, we had, I told my wife before we got married, we weren't going to have any debt and, except the house. And so, anyway, uh, on our first anniversary, I bought her a sleep number bed, which is very expensive, and I uh, charged it. Well, now she she likes to spend money like it's made out of water, like there's an endless supply. And I can't get her to to sit down with me and and uh, create a budget. And and I you know I would really like to do the financial peace university with her, uh, but I just don't know how to get her to agree to those things. Well, the first thing you don't do is say, Dave Ramsey said, (laughs) whatever. You've already did it, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. You turned me into a cuss word, man. You you wimp. You blamed it on me. And the second thing is you can't tell your wife, okay, this is going into our, our my new marriage. This is going to be a key priority for us until the first big purchase, and then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, knock down my own boundary and then get mad at you for, yeah. for walking through that gate that I opened up. You can't do that. Yeah. So yeah, I understand. What you've got to do is you have to dial back because both of you engaged in childish behavior, and we have to both dial back to adult behavior. Uh, adults devise a plan and follow it children do what feels good and so what you're discussing is the symptom the symptom is overspending the symptom is debt the symptom is a sleep number bed you financed a bed a bed man a bed (laughs) you gotta say that out loud oh and so you have to dial back and go those are symptoms and the, the problem that caused those symptoms to occur is vision, lack of it. You do not have a shared right. vision for your wealth in the future and what your wealth will do for you. It will allow us to travel. It will allow us to buy this. It will allow us to be generous in this way. And we have to do things to cause that wealth to happen and one of those is avoiding debt going forward and that includes me because i'm a bonehead and i broke my own word here you got to start with apologizing deeply a deep bow and scrape and uh beg for forgiveness and then say but the reason i wanted us to do that even though i screwed it up was because i believe if we stay out of debt these are the things that are going to happen let's talk about why and where we're going and changing our family tree and retiring with dignity and being in a position to be unbelievably generous and those kinds of big things then she can get on board and oh by the way you get a vote and i get a vote we both have a vote and we don't go against that my wife and i were discussing a major purchase this morning before i left home and she wasn't happy about it, and I'm really happy about it. <laughs> and uh, but, but but later on, but later on, it got we got happy, you know, and so <laughs> it worked out. But we weren't go. I wasn't going to go forward with that until we're both in agreement and it fits into our overall plan. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's Is important. It a boat or a truck, Dave? <laughs> Gun or a truck? Could be. Yeah, could be. It could be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you sidetracked me. Um, so here's another thing. A conversation you can have after the vision conversation is, 
being curious with yourself when you're about to buy something, both you and her. The question I always want to ask myself, for me, it's eating. For me, it is, I want to skip a workout. For me, it's, I'm not going to check in with my wife on this. I'm just going to go do it. Right when I'm about to make a behavior that I know is going to cost me downstream, what's been transformative for me is instead of getting mad, instead of getting frustrated, is stopping and being curious and asking myself, what am I trying to protect myself from? What is this Amazon purchase? What am I trying? Oh, I'm bored. Oh, I had a, 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 a tiff with my six-year-old and I'm pouting. And so I'm going to go buy some more, I don't know, fishing line or something stupid that I don't really need. What am I doing this stuff for? And then that's always going to push me back to the vision, right? Which is, oh, we're doing this for this. So I'm not going to hit it for this, right? I'm not going to hit purchase. I'm not going to go buy this. I'm not going to buy a $9,000 bed on credit um, because we have a different vision for our life. But the the... the the most asked question since I started this show 30 years ago, how do I get my spouse on board? Yep. And number one answer is don't say Dave Ramsey said, because nobody cares what Dave Ramsey said. It's got to be about us. It's got to be yeah. from inside, right? It's, yeah. And, and no, really, the truth. I mean, that's not me just being humble or weird or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, your opinion for your life is that you're the only one gets a vote in your life. Imagine if, if Sharon, I don't get a vote in your life. If Sharon came to you and said, Dave. Uh, my friend Dan says that I should hold your hand more, so I'm going to start doing that. That wouldn't mean anything, right? But if if, if my wife comes to me and says, hey, I, I want to start holding your hand, I mean, like I thought like I want to be, get closer yeah. to you. That means something so, to me. So you always, you, number one, you don't blame it on me. Number right. two, the, there's a whole get out of debt thing here is so that. Right. What's your so that? Yes. It's so that we can be not broke anymore and stressed. It's so that we don't ever act like, you know, we're not, we've both talked about your parents are, are pitiful. Yeah. We're sad about their financial condition. We don't want to be them when we're old. That's right. It's so that we're going to avoid debt so that we're not them. Mm -hmm. We're going to avoid debt so that we've got a pile of money. We can send the kids to college without any debt. We want to be so that we'd like to open a, a hospital in our neighborhood and drop $10 million into that. I, we, so that, I don't know what your so that is, but you need a so that because debt in and of itself is not worth it. That's right. I mean, it's good. It's good. Get out of debt. It's a good thing. But the only reason we want you to get out of debt, the reason we teach you to get out of debt, it's so that yes. you get financial peace. Yes. And so sleep. that you can do things. Yes. And you can say when that kid comes to your door, you don't kind of find nickels and pennies. You can buy all the candy, right? You can do those generous things, man. You can just completely buy out all the inventory of the Girl Scout. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be fun. Just mess with her day. And I what mean, would be really great is to have <laughs> 75 boxes of cookies, and I'll try to explain well, to my wife. I'm just doing a good thing, hon. Buy, buy, a, buy a single mama car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, buy 10 of my car. Exactly. You know, I mean, change your life, man. So Take that it, girl in the youth group and pay for her yeah. college. But Help the problem out. is when we get down into the weeds, it all comes down to a sleep number bed. It becomes a math problem instead of a heart it's problem. It's a sleep yeah. number bed. What? 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 Yeah. I mean, God, I wish I could go back and tell you all the stupid butt stuff. I have done with money and bought things oh. I have bought that are just hilariously stupid. Sleep number bed wouldn't be on the list, but nope. I've done some hilariously stupid things. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Dr. John Deloney, number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Lisa's with us in Chicago. Hi, Lisa. How are you? How are you doing? Good. How can we help? So I'm in the middle of negotiating my salary for a new job, um, and I'm a little bit... Um, don't know how to handle it or how to take it from here. And to uh, to give you a little bit of background, uh, I'm in a dead end IT job, <laughs> so I decided to go somewhere else. Plus, get a certification. Um, so my next job, I asked for. I currently make seventy three base. I asked for eighty three, but they're not willing to pay more than seventy five. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. How big That's a company right is now. this? It's big. Big? Fin- yes, financial. Uh, it's during the financial industry. Okay. All right. Um, well, you probably got your number. You just sure. need to decide if you want to work there. I doubt that they're going to do a bunch of negotiating. I think they've told you what they're going to do. You might get a little mm-hmm. bit out of this, but uh, the, the 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 way to posture and position yourself so you don't harm yourself into a brand new job, you don't automatically end the honeymoon before it starts. Um, is just switch shoes for a minute. If you were that supervisor that's interviewing you or that company that's interviewing you, why would you give you more money? I want it is not a reason. Uh huh. Okay. And I had a magic number in my head that they didn't meet. Doesn't make them a bad person. I was the worst. I would have a magic number in my head and it was so, sometimes it was ludicrous. And then the boss would come in and I'd feel like they and, and offer me, hey, here's a job, and here's 5000 less than your magic number. And I would feel that as a loss, like they had taken something from me, right? <laughs> they had right, it all. That's they'd how offer, I feel. Yeah, they'd offer me a job. <laughs> and so you just have to decide, right. do I want to um, change my life for 2000 bucks and a big company that if you go in there and bust it and do great work and provide value – will increase your salary over time in, in different roles and professional and professional responsibilities, right? So the way I would approach it is I would just ask the super hiring supervisor that you're talking to mm-hmm. or whatever the phrase yeah. is that you use, how could mm-hmm. I add more value in this position that would make me more valuable? That would okay. make you guys want to pay me more. I don't want you to give me more money just because I, I think I deserve it because I breathe air. I'm willing to do things that are moral and reasonable, extra. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to add uh, elements to this that that you know that make me more valuable to this company. And then you that that you know what 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 would be the thing I would need to well you'd need to get this certification. Great. Can we agree that when I get this certification, then I that it comes with an automatic raise that matches that, and I'll go get the certification. Mm-hmm. And you can start at the lower position and then go get the certification six months later and get your raise, right? Um, or whatever, right. but, but you're asking, mm-hmm. you're not asking them to give you something because you're entitled in any way. No, I'm not. I don't feel that way at all. I know. And so make sure you're vocalizing it that way. How can I, okay. how can I add value that, because I would really like to make 80, but I don't expect you to pay me that or 85. I don't expect you to pay me that unless there's a reason Mm-hmm. And so I'm asking you, what would I need to do to be worth 85 or 80 or whatever for you guys? Because I'd really like to right. get there. Help me because I'm, I'm all about personal growth. I'm all about getting better. And I'm all about making sure that I make you more than I cost you. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. And I think, Dave, you that, that wisdom is good because she enters into a conversation that's with, not against. And she might find out, oh man, we pay this, this is a big company. And so we pay this band of employee X and Y and you're at the top of that range, but mm-hmm. we're going to move you. So you mm-hmm. find out actually they're capping the value that they can. But So you find out a lot of stuff when it's, we're on the same side, but when we're across the negotiating table, then it's got to be you versus me, right? <clears throat> a, well, a negotiation properly done of any kind is not put up your dukes. That's right. It's not, I'm going to take from you so that I get more. All right. It's not a zero-sum game. Uh, in other words, if, if she brought in an extra million dollars in revenue to that organization, would they gladly give her more money? Absolutely. In a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, most of them would anyway. Yeah. Some of them are too stupid to do that. But most of them, <laughs> most companies, small, large, anything. And so it's like we go win together. I tell folks around here, if you leave the cave, kill something, and drag it home, I will share it with you. Right. 
You know, I, I'm not going, I'm not greedy. I don't, but, but also not going to pay you. You know, I had one guy go, well, you know, you need to pay me this because I've got all these degrees. And I'm like, he had more degrees than a thermometer. I mean, it was like, and I'm like, dude, your raise is effective when you are. Right. You know, this is a small business. So at, so all negotiations are how can we get to where we want to be together? Even how do, if you're buying something from somebody. How do you keep, I, I, once, I, once I sit across the table from somebody, my hackles come up. Yeah. How do you keep from turning it into a competition? Yeah. Well, it, it, the problem you're is. You're a competitive if, guy. If you, I mean, that's. Oh, yeah. If, if. My deal becomes not beating him. My deal become my, my win is when I get the deal done. Okay. Not, uh, not okay. that I destroy him. Not that I got him to take $5,000 less, but no. we, how, uh, we how shook did I get hands. the deal done? Because I, because you it's win because I got and, it. See, the, the, if you get into a one-dimensional thing on a negotiation where it's just like a uh, price on, uh, you're buying a car from somebody and the price is this and you go, okay, well, I'll give you this. Well, I'll take that. Well, back and you go, you know, it's just back and forth to you meets and then you go, well, we'll split the difference or whatever. And you go back and forth with this verbal ping pong mm-hmm. back and balls on your side and it balls on my side. And every time we get a little bit closer, finally, someone goes enough. This is it that you've reached my point. <laughs> right. You got my number and you go, OK, I'm in or I'm not. Uh, or uh, but if you can make it about something else, yeah, you know, it's not just the price. OK, for instance, I'm used to, you know, buy a lot of foreclosures or I buy a lot of real estate. And I would tell people in those days, a house has been sitting on the market for a while. We will close it this afternoon for cash. Mm. Now that matters. Yes. You lighten their load a little bit. This is just, we're done. You got money tonight Mm -hmm. to go buy a lobster dinner, baby. (laughs) I mean, this is today. You've been screwing around with this house for six months. You're behind on your payments tonight. And in return, what do I get? price a good house yeah yeah i get a house but i get a good price i get a good price but but the immediacy mm-hmm. is a different factor than price right and so you add other factors into the equation when you're negotiating and in her case the factor we're adding in is how can i add value mm-hmm. to where you wish that i was here mm-hmm. you're happy that i'm here yeah. what can i do to be the best team player you've ever had on the team yeah you know and and what does it look like to be as our friend pat lencioni says the ideal team player love it andrew is with us andrew is in kansas city hi andrew how are you i'm good thank you for taking the call Dave. sure what's up yeah um i'm just wondering the question i have is should i sell my house um now there's a lot of uh things that happened here in the last few years, uh, namely, uh, when we, when I say we, but I, uh, bought the house at the time, um, I was married and I bought it with my wife expecting, you know, a larger family, um, and whatnot. Unfortunately, in the same month we bought it, you know, uh, she asked me for a divorce and, uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't work any work the marriage out and uh, oh, so now I'm <laughs> why, why, uh, so would now you, I'm why, why would you not sell it why would I not sell it mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to make uh, one I don't the, I don't want to make an emotional decision based off the house mm-hmm. and I want it to do it like a smart way mm-hmm. uh, secondly um, but you wouldn't buy this house my, today in your situation mm, no Okay. When, not, when, when was your divorce finalized? Uh, uh, last year. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Andrew. Yeah. Your heart. Your, I can I can hear your heart breaking in front of me. You're you're still really hurting, and um yes. and that's kind of clouding, and you don't trust your own judgment. You're not confident anymore in your own judgment. So I don't think you're making a mistake selling the house. It's just a stupid house. And it sounds yeah. to me like it's uh, it's a part of a future that died, and it's okay to let it go with the death of that dream, with the death of that marriage, and go start fresh somewhere to be good for you, to have a new space to be in. John, you think that's right? I'd, I'd sell it. I'd put it on the market today. Yeah. yeah. I'd be done with it, man. I'm sorry for it's you. It's time. Sorry. This is The Ramsey Show. Chaos. 
That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast, you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. You can catch that on podcast, and you should. He talks to folks about mental health every day, boundaries, crazy relatives, crazy personal stuff, uh, all kinds of mental health things. It is just downright enthralling. You need to check it out. It's a lot of fun to listen to, and John's common sense approach to a very difficult subject and his compassion and, uh, and his straightforward advice is all there. The Dr. John Deloney Show. Check it out on Ramsey Networks or anywhere you listen to great podcasts. And you'll be able to do that. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage is Bill and Jess. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? We're great. You're welcome. Where do you all live? Lake Orion, Michigan. Okay. Where's that near? Uh, Auburn Hills. It's about an hour and 15 minutes north of Detroit. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. No right where you are. Wonderful. Well, welcome to Nashville. Thanks for having and me. And here to do a debt-free scream. How much did you pay off? Paid off $76,000 in 17 months. Wow. wow. Good for you. And your range of income during that year and a half? Uh, we went from 80 to 120, back down to 80, uh, back up to about 140. Okay. Wow. What do y'all do for a living? Jess is a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. and I'm a robotics engineer. Okay, so why all the gyration? What'd you do? Take a bunch of jobs, drop them off, and <laughs> something else happen? Uh, more or less, yeah. Um, so 80 was my starting. I started a, a new position uh, a little bit before we started our debt-free journey, mm -hmm. um, and then jumped up because I was working 80 to 100 hours every week. Oh, yeah, okay. as a, a field service engineer, so I was gone 80% of the time. A lot okay. of travel. Yeah, and that uh, that kind of got burned out a little bit, so stepped back, uh, took a position that I didn't get any overtime, and uh, in December, I started my own business. Oh, wow. Yeah, working All for right. myself now, yeah. That'll work. Yeah. And now we can control both the income and the hours. Absolutely. Yeah, hardest yeah. boss you'll ever have. <laughs> yeah. yeah he's, he's a tough, he's a tough old bird, man. I'm just right? yeah, I don't know about that. Too. Slave driver. <laughs> so uh, what kind of debt was the 76000 so we had a uh, an IKEA credit card mm -hmm. that, uh, for kitchen remodel. We had cell phones. We had a truck loan, and student loans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how long y'all been married? Eight years. Okay. Wow. Just celebrated eight years. So what happened that lit this thing on fire 17 months ago? How'd you connect up with this Ramsey stuff? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Ramsey baby. I I grew up on listening to you and Dr. Laura all the time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, in the car. So a couple of truth tellers. I'm telling you. Yeah, common sense. So, yeah. Um, w the reason that we got started because we were just you know sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, we finally we always had these excuses up to recently where, while well, I'm in school, we're not making a lot of money. You know, okay, now we have money, but we have debt to pay off. But we still have all these things that we've wanted over the past you know five or six years. And, you know, we, at the end of the month, we just, we had more month than we had money. So eventually I was like, okay, we're making more money than we ever have. What's going on? So and we're uh, still broke. And we're still yeah. broke. Yeah. Yeah. So I was looking for a budgeting app and at the same time I was looking for a podcast because we were remodeling our kitchen and uh, I listened to a lot of Joe Rogan. 
So I got burned out on that and uh, found you. I've listened to you as a kid, so I was like, you know, I wonder if uh, if Uncle Dave has a, a, po- a <laughs> podcast. And sure enough, and we also started using the Every Dollar Budget app. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, to track everything. Cool. So, so Jesse comes home and he's like, "I found this from my childhood, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm tired of being broke." What did you say? Well, he's kind of a zero to a hundred kind of guy, so I kind of had to back it down a little bit, and we had a lot of conversations, and we just listened to a lot of the um, testimonies. Ah, um, you were a cuss word for a little bit, but <laughs> it was yeah, my we, fault. <laughs> we, um, I don't know. We we just had to listen and discuss and really mm-hmm. have to get on the same page first. Yeah, so he just kind of came in and went da da da. We're yeah. going on beans and rice and selling your car. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I like, joined a I cult and you are too. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, "I don't think so." <laughs> I like her. This is great. Did yeah. you have a picture great. growing up of what debt free living looked like, Jess? Or is this all new to you? Well, my parents were actually pretty good with money, okay. so I feel like we're just I. I kind of grew up like that too. We're just very goal oriented. Ever since we met, we were that way. We got married. We were kind of young and we just were like, we see what we want and we go and we get it. So it wasn't that far off, but it was, it, it, it sounded like a good idea. I wasn't yeah. against it, but it you, took some you convincing for all a little the things, bit. All the things he was instituting. All of it. Yeah. Right, right. But you yeah. guys paid off a lot of money in a short period of year time. and a half with three little ones. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, a lot of travel, like I was saying before. So, yeah, yeah I mean, being a stay-at-home mom with three kids by yourself for, you know, a couple of weeks at a time is... Uh, she was a single mom. She can attest to that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. We had just had our middle child when we decided to do this. So we had a newborn in a kitchen remodel, and he was gone. <laughs> and it's yeah. an Ikea one. Try to put those things together, right? Right, Jeez. right. We right. still are. Yeah. <laughs> of course. You're a robotics engineer, and yeah. you don't know how the cabinets go together. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kitchen looks great. Kitchen looks great. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> he did a good job. But, yeah, then we all, we decided to get, you know, have another baby again. They're 13 months apart. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah, that's... We had two babies while paying dead off. Yeah, so. yep, yep. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys have been, yeah, zero to 100 for sure, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations, y'all. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, okay, when you. you look back on it, you say, all right, what's the key to getting out of debt? Communication, definitely. And, uh... Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Don't stop. Not only the same page, but the same pace. Right, right. Yeah, like I've said before, you know, it's better for both people to go seven out of ten as opposed to one person going ten and one going zero because it just doesn't work. Yeah, communication, I think looking at the bigger picture, um, I think that money is just a way to count score. But the things that this will change along the journey, um, especially with like our marriage and with money, we were not on the same page before. We thought we were, but we just didn't really talk about it. You know, there were some trust things on my side going on. And um, I think doing this together and, and seeing that goal at the end, just it changes everything. It's not just about your bank account and what you owe. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. Um, that's exciting. Y'all that's are so, so cool. cool. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How's it feel to be free? I feel like it hasn't hit me yet. No, me still. neither. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll get there quick. You'll yes. get there quick. Hey, be and the, the one question I've got before we go, totally tangential. Um, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce that. Are the robots going to come get us? <laughs> <laughs> Is Terminator 2 real? Are they I'm coming not, for us? I'm not sure yet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that means yes. I knew it. I knew it. All right. Don't, well, don't feed his conspiracy <laughs> side. Please I'll don't let, feed I'll it. let you know, though. Hey, Wait, will you holler at I'll us, I'll give please? you a heads up. Thank sure. You. Sure. Give Thank us a you. heads up. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let us know. Put us on the list of people you Put call. Put us on the list, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good job, you guys. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. You guys have changed your family tree with all these beautiful youngsters. Very, very well done. Thank you. Copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away with, to someone you've inspired. And, of course, Financial Peace University, a 12-month membership Thank to you. that with the brand-new videos that include Dr. John Deloney, George Camel, and Rachel Cruz in them. Look at those beautiful kiddos what are their names and ages so this is mabel Mm -hmm. she's four Mm -hmm. this is daisy she's a year and a half Mm -hmm. and hattie is seven months ah yeah you are totally outnumbered brother (laughs) that's good Uh, congratulations you guys our dog's female too so (laughs) (laughs) we're so proud of y'all well done all right bill and jess and mabel and daisy and hattie lake orion michigan you did it man $76,000 $76,000 paid off in 17 months, making 80 to 120 to 80 to now self-employed at 140. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. 
Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt free! free! Yeah. yeah! Beautiful. Way to go. Those little kids have no idea the price their mom and dad paid. Mm-mm. Mom at home with three tiny little babies in a kitchen under construction. Dad gone, 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 working, 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 working to get their family tree changed. Powerful. That's real adults right there. You pay a price. You serve your family. That's right. You win. And everybody was serving, right? Everybody was serving. Everybody. And those three little girls are not going to even understand that stress. Man, they'll never never have it. They'll never have that same feeling. Mm -mm. And it's over. And uh, one thing about going through that is he'll make sure they're trained. Well, he's going to be making sure they can deal the robot invasion coming. (laughs) That's what he can focus his energy on that, which is exciting, man. That's why John's here. (laughs) This is The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Our Wealth Building Live event tour is completely blowing up, blowing out. Yesterday, we announced we're completely sold out for our Phoenix show on September 13th. We were able to add a second show in Phoenix, and so we'll be there on Monday, September the 12th as well. Sacramento, Minneapolis, and San Antonio aren't far behind. They're all in the 90 percentile on sold out, meaning that there's probably a couple of weeks worth of supply of tickets still. If you don't get your tickets soon, they're going to be gone. And we're not adding new nights to those cities because we can't get venues. So when those are sold out, they're just like gone. So these are hot tickets. It's me, Rachel Cruz, George Campbell, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman. We're all going to be there. We're going to talk about the crazy things going on in the world of money and uh, what's happening about building wealth out there. And we're going to answer questions. We'll have a panel discussion. We're going to be signing books and taking pictures and all kinds of stuff. So make sure you come out. Again, Phoenix, September 12th, just added. September 13th, Salmeno, almost gone. Minneapolis, almost gone. November 1 and 10. November 15, we're going to be one a week through the month of November. San Antonio is November 15. So, Tickets are, tickets are only $25. You can get a four-pack for $60. Bring some of your friends with you. Uh, it's less than the cost of a dadgum pizza. So, RamseySolutions.com slash events. Get your tickets. We want to have you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. These things are a blast. We at Ramsey love getting out in all the different communities and hanging out with you guys and meeting people. And it's just fun for us, and it's obviously fun for you guys. Each of these events are 3,000 or so folks, and they're just about all gone. So, we love appreciate that thank you very much for that phoenix uh richard's with us in columbia south carolina hi richard how are you hey doing great dave good afternoon uh dave and ken uh, i've been a long time listener since 2012 and i've tried several different times yesterday was one of those uh, i ran short of second in line and had eight percent on my phone and i had to get back with austin and say i couldn't make the phone call so i'm um, look i look forward to uh, today so i'm glad it worked out me on. We got rid of yes, Ken, yes. though. That was yesterday. Today's yeah, I'm Dr. John, John today. Oh, okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to go with the B team today. So what's up, man? No, no, no. Hey, uh, I just um, my my big question is, uh, what is the best way to, to set a budget? Um, a retired military member, uh, after 24 years, uh, re- um, divorced, remarried, and now I just uh, sold my house and paid down all my portion of the debt. My wife and I. Uh, have a house that we need to pay off and only a auto loan. Everything else, uh, zero credit card debt uh, and just a home and uh, the auto. But just trying to set up a budget, we not only have that, but we are also entrepreneurs. My wife owns a restaurant. She owns a hair braiding shop. She, we're both uh, real estate agents, and I'm a life insurance agent. And we have a rental event business. 
Well, y'all need uh, something to do. That, so. You're bored yeah, to exactly. death. We need, yeah, we're bored. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, constantly moving, so... So, all right. The to, way the way the way you lay out a budget is number one: when you're married, you have to do it together. Mm-hmm. You both have a vote, and when we're done, we have to be in agreement. And when we're done, we have to pinky sw- pinky swear and spit shake that we're going to stick to this plan that we laid out. All mm-hmm. a budget is is a spending plan. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And so, what you're going to do is at the beginning of each month. You're going to try to figure out as best as you can for that particular month what your income is going to be. Now, you've got a lot of variable incomes in this deal, so it's going to be a little hard to mm-hmm. hit it perfectly. But usually mm-hmm. 30 days out, you kind of know the restaurant's going to do this. I got this closing. I don't have anything in the pipeline mm-hmm. to close real estate. I've got this or that. I normally make X in insurance, whatever it is. And you put those numbers down. You say, okay, this is our income for the month. And then you spend that income on paper, on purpose, Mm -hmm. before the month begins and agree on it with your spouse. Every one of your dollars of income each month, brand new month, brand new list, has an assignment. And we're going to buy food. We're going to pay lights. We're going to pay that house payment, that car payment. We're going to pay extra on that car. Whatever it is we're going to do with the money, every one of these dollars down through here, we're going to set aside this much money for electricity. We're going to set aside this much money for the water bill. We're going to set aside every dollar has a name, an assignment, a mission. And then you look at it together and you go, well, I don't really think we should spend that much on that. Or I think that's going to cost more than that. No, we can't live on $100 worth of food, honey. You're going to have to raise that one. And so the two of you together make the adjustments, but it still equals zero at the bottom. Your income minus these assignments equals exactly zero. Now you have planned your money for the month. And then you stick to that plan. And if you can't stick to that plan, you have to have an emergency budget committee meeting, and the two of you have to sit down and adjust the plan mid-month because something's messed up. The first three months you do this, you will suck at it. You'll get a little bit better each month. The first month will be an unmitigated disaster usually. But that doesn't mean you give up. It just means you don't know how to do this yet, and you're figuring it out. You're practicing. You're learning. Then the two of you work together to build a plan or adjust your plan, build a plan, adjust a plan, build a plan, adjust a plan, and you'll eventually get really, really good at it. Uh, I've been doing it for 30-something years with my wife, and it's it's a second nature. I mean, we can do it in, you know, like uh, less than two minutes. It's not much to it. Number one, we don't have any bills. That's helpful. But... uh, (laughs) That makes it go real fast. But, yeah, so so we have to have other issues. I was going to put that out there. We don't have any pills. I mean, well, I mean, it makes it – if your list isn't very long, it's, hey, you know, it's an easy list, right? It's the so, best. So, yeah, th- that's the thing. And, and jump online, Richard, and get the Every Dollar app. And uh, you did mention you paid off all your debt, but, like, your wife didn't have debt or had debt or something. No, that's not how this works. When you're married, whatever debt she has is yours. Whatever debt you had is, your, is hers. We – are married and so we are operating as a team and the people that win with money operate as a unit as a couple not uh not not like roommates and so get on the same page we're going to completely clean this whole thing up for both of you and then we're going to completely build wealth for both of you the every dollar app is free to use just jump online and start using it and you're going to find in this new marriage that doing these things together is going to create a common vision and a common language and your marriage is going to get better and your parenting is going to get better. And then you can take these lessons and apply them to all 411 of your businesses and you're going to see those things tighten up and clean up too. It's awesome, man. Yep. Good for you. Rick is with us in Tampa. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hey, uh, Dr. John. Thank you uh, for taking my call. I, I, I really needed your uh, insight and uh uh, advice uh, on an issue that I'm, I'm struggling with emotionally as well. Uh, here's my situation, fellas. I'm uh, I'm 64. Uh, I've been retired for seven years now. Uh, I'm divorced as of three years ago. Uh, I have never taken a penny out of my retirement um, until my divorce, when you know, of course my ex-wife was owed some, and that was just you know a transfer of funds. I live on. Uh, 71000 a year as comprised of a pension and Social Security. And I live quite comfortably on it. I live a fairly simple life. Uh, I am debt-free. I, I don't owe anyone anything. How much is in this nest egg, then? Well, 
after the dust settled uh, three years ago, I have eight hundred thirty-five thousand in, mm-hmm. you know, in that in the, in the retirement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have fifty-one thousand, you know, non-qualified in brokerage. Mm-hmm. I keep about fifteen thousand in the local bank here, mm-hmm. and uh, my 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 present home uh, worth about four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Here's my here's my dilemma. Uh, you know, I struggle with you know when am I going to start to enjoy some of the fruits of my labor. I'm, I'm pretty careful with my money. I've been, well, I am careful with it. Yeah, you've done a but, great job. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, well, so you're a millionaire, thinking, man. Well, You started from yeah. nothing. You did great. Touchdown. Yeah, you won the Super Bowl. Listen, I, well, thank you. You're yeah, a millionaire I, I after a some, divorce. That's that's incredible. Yeah, man. well, and I did it with some limitations that I won't get into, some physical limitations. Sure. But that's either there. Um, but what, what I'm looking to do when I'm struggling with, I, I'm thinking I want to move up in the house. And when I say move up, just change location, get a little closer to a beach. How much would you I, spend? Well, in the neighborhood of 700 maybe 650 to 700 Okay, and you'd have a half a million left over if you sold your house. So if you buy a $600,000 house, you sell a $400,000 house, you pull 200 out of 800 or 300 out of 800, you're going to have a half million left over. In seven years when you're 70, uh, you said you're 64, when you're 71, uh, you'll have a million dollars in cash in that one account still. So yes, you should move up and you should pay cash for it and you should sell the one you're in. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, and number one best-selling author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is my co-host today. We'll take your questions at 888-825-5225. Stephanie is with us in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm good. Thanks for talking to me. Sure. What's up? Um, My husband and I have been married almost a year and for five months of that we've been uh dealing with a health issue i was diagnosed with non-hodgkin's lymphoma oh, man. and uh i'm so sorry we've been well thank you um so we never gotten a good rhythm together in our newlywed as far as finances were concerned i had to stop working full-time i'm working part-time and we've been doing fine, but I'd like to get refocused once my chemo's up uh, in September. And we're going to have a budget meeting and celebrate and discuss. Mm. So my question is, how do we start that and get back on track and reapproach finances after we got kind of derailed right in the beginning? Mm. How old are you? Uh, 31. Mm. So it sounds like the prognosis when the chemo is finished in September is excellent the way you're laying this out. Yes. We're very hopeful it'll be cured and my pet scan will be cancer free. Okay. And we start the cancer free journey then. Well, why yeah. not just whip cancer in the first year of marriage? Let's just go ahead and get that one out of the way. <laughs> oh my goodness, kiddo. Wow. Well, I'm so sorry. Mm. What a strain and what a weird thing to have to go through in, in year one of marriage. I mean, wow, that's amazing. Uh, okay. Um, well, to start with, let's just talk, let's just say this, doing a budget and getting on a plan to build wealth is an important part of the rhythm of your life. It is not even on the same scale as beating cancer. (laughs) Okay. So, I mean, like budget two, cancer 12 (laughs) on a scale of one to 10, right? So, uh, 
you know, I, 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 amazing. You're an amazing young hero. Uh, congratulations. Wow. So uh, uh, I want you to finish using all the energy that you have at this moment to live in the present and knock this out. I know you need to look past the chemo just to get through it. I don't blame you for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the but but let's just number one. Let, let's just say it is very very important that it's more important that you complete this and that you beat the cancer by far than it is that you do a budget in September. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Whew, okay. Now now budget no but not a big deal now. I mean it's like. You've okay. done two tours in Vietnam. Walking down the street past an alley is not a problem, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. So that, that's where we are. So, uh, uh, yeah, th- then you just sit down and you're going to do you, what you're looking for. So a normal life, finally, to have a, nor- a normal struggle, to pay off some debt and to, to live on the same page together and that kind of thing. And so whatever lingering medical bills you have, whatever debts you have, you're going to begin to address those. And the two of you are going to sit down and start working the baby steps, using a budget to do that and working together. But you've learned to work together. You didn't have a choice. That's true. Um, one, there's some great psychological literature out there that suggests that when people have the opportunity to peer over the edge, whatever that looks like, that it changes their approach to, through life both uh both of you in your marriage right and so i would Mm -hmm. love before you sit down and start doing the math problems i think it would be phenomenal to start a weekly dreaming session with your husband answering one question now that we've peered over the edge who do we want to be because most of us walk through life in the illusion that we're going to make it to 72 to 85 years old. That's about the average is right. And we'll be all right. And the reality is none of us know. And you got to lean over the edge. You got to sit in that room and have that scary C word conversation, right? You've been there. You've had chemo plugged in, you know, and now you can say, who do we want to be with the 10 minutes or the hundred years we have left? Right. And then, man, right. budget becomes how do we fulfill this cool thing? Because if we owe some money, we need to get that knocked out. So that, right. If um, we want to go travel more, I want you to quit your dumb job because it's killing you faster than my chemo is hurting me. Like, let's do that now. Like, so you can make some of those decisions based on who do we want to be together? What's the world we want to create for ourselves? And how can we love and support those in our community? You see how radical of a different approach that is? Yeah. You have the gift of perspective. It's one of the things that this is going to give you is that gift, all this pain and all this. And I don't want that gift, fear. right? I don't want that. I, I would, you could keep your gift, but you've got it now, right? So the question is, what are you, what are you going to do with it, right? I, I, yeah. You're a powerful, brave woman, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's an honor to talk to you. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. And if we can help you in any way, let us know. But basically, you're going to sit down to a zero-based budget that aims the money that you make towards your goals. Mm-hmm. But uh, John's point is, I think your goals are going to be a lot uh, more noble, uh, a lot more, um, you know, your goals aren't going to be, I want a new car, you know, (laughs) it could be, it could be if that's okay, if it is, but it's the shallowness that most people live in. I don't think you're going to struggle with for a while. That's exactly. It may come back on you at some point, but right now you've got the gift of perspective. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it was forced upon you. You didn't sign up for it. And those those bills. Just because they've got cancer on them or doctors, on, they are debts, right? And they go in line just with every other debt, and and we're going to knock them out one at a time. Yeah. yeah. Best we can. So I've been asked, John, over the years on the show uh, many times. Uh, the first time it happened, a guy called me from Atlanta, pulled over to the side of the road and sat on the side of the road and talked to me. He was on his way home to tell his wife that he was had been diagnosed with stage four. Yikes. And he said, I, he said, I got 90 days what the doctor said wow. and he's going home and tell his wife for, and he called me on the radio from the side of the road i'm like this dude i would have there's a lot of other people but you know but his whole point was he could deal with it better if he had his ducks in a row on how to, to make sure she was taken care of i got to get a will done i got to you know pull the life insurance policies out and make sure i see what they what they are i mean i've got i've got to lay out a game plan here for her because i've not got a lot of time to make sure she's going to be okay mm-hmm. and uh that'll give me peace if i have done that and so i you know when i understood that i was okay i get it still kind of weird that i get a phone call from the side of the road like that but 
uh, uh, it's uh, it's honoring and humbling. Yeah. Uh, but but from that day and all the different calls similar to that I've gotten over the years, obviously Stephanie's not in that situation. She's got a recovery going. Uh, but anytime you get something like that, you know, you, you, what you want to do with the baby steps and everything else is just push full, full stop, mm. pause, pause. We're just going to pile up cash and live in the moment, uh, you know, for these short couple of moments we got it, and our pile up cash and use it to clear this. Now, once it's cleared in September, now she's going to go back to doing a regular budget and a regular rhythm on that, which is a good thing to do. Right desperately crave normal that's right after something like this but it's okay to stop and pile up cash yep. look i love real estate and i want you to have a house but i don't want a house to have you that's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. So, John, a um, lot of stuff going on with questions for humans. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought? I didn't. <laughs> John came to me with this idea, and he said, we're going to make cards like a deck of cards that helps people start conversations and so they can get off their cell phones and actually talk to each other. And I said, uh, that'll never work. And good God, hundreds of thousands yeah. of these things later was I wrong. We're, we're doing all right with them. All right. We can't keep them. <laughs> I can't order them fast enough. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's the most popular thing. I've, and it, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's uh, we've, now we got all kinds of versions. Yes. yes Questions yes. for humans. So well, that, that's they're, they're conversation starters, a little deck of cards, and it's got a question on it, something like, uh, what's your favorite movie or. But they're twisted. They're not they're not just like, what's your favorite movie? It's what make what movie made you laugh so hard you peed your pants? And when when did you see it? Like, what was the story around that? Yeah, right? okay. So we're trying to create communication. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, and after we put out the first few decks, then people said, "Well, hey, could you make one for my workplace? Could you make one for my like girls' night out?" And I was like, "I haven't been on a lot of girls' nights, but we're happy to <laughs> give it a shot." But we have some girls that work here that exactly have been right. on that. They can help us. Yeah, brilliant women in a room and figured out. So anyway, we're working on them and uh, putting them out, and it's it's been a blast, man. So now we've added girls' night out, guys' night out, dating conversation starters, parents and teens. Yeah, there's people that talk well. Man, that that one I can get, okay? <laughs> Workplace edition, all of these are there. So uh, the created the, the, the we've created these questions for human cards, conversation starters, help you uh, disconnect from your screens and connect to actual humans. And uh, these are fun. I mean, I'm, I'm joking around about it. I'm actually telling the truth. I didn't think it would work, but... Uh, but they've uh, we, we've had a lot of fun with them around the office here in different settings. Um, 
we started one in the uh, uh, one of the leadership meetings the other day and discovered that I've had more traffic tickets than everyone else in the room put together. <laughs> so uh, hey, the other day we it's not a shock. We've got a few new decks coming that um, I was editing and uh, I did them with my wife on the way to our trip this past week. Four hours in, we're laughing, telling stories, stuff. I we've been we celebrating our 20th anniversary. I did not know some of these stories about her, uh, uh, and vice versa. So they were a lot. They're good, man. They're just good. They're fun. So, so pick them up. Questions from human questions for humans. Conversation starter cards. Uh, all these different versions are there now at RamseySolutions.com, and uh, they're they're flying off the shelves. They're a big deal, and you're going to love them. They're fabulous. I mean, I'll just love it when I'm wrong. So there you go. And you get tickets? You get tickets? What are the tickets? No, do you get a lot of driving tickets, speeding tickets? Oh, oh, of course. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. that. You, 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 that's easy to predict. That is, yeah, fairly, exactly. Pr- fairly. Blinds.com is our question <laughs> of the day. 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, the new promos they run every month, and you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Mike in Texas. Mike writes, my wife and I are in baby step two and have been able to pay about $4,000 of our debt in the past three months. However, we've hit some bumps along the way. My wife is the sweetest person I know. Uh Uh-oh. Anytime somebody starts a sentence that way. (laughs) I have the best wife, but. But. My husband is so great, but. But. My wife is the sweetest person I know, and she Mm -hmm. loves buying gifts for people. Most recently, she bought me a set of power tools for three hundred dollars. And I, oh, well, that's so <laughs> nice. I do enjoy woodworking. I do not need or want these tools. I see that as a three hundred dollar chunk that could have been put towards credit card debt. Because yeah, you're right. Is there a way to politely decline this gift from my wife and return it, or should I just be grateful for it and move forward? Oh Jesus! Whoa, you touch this one, Dave. Um. Everybody in this conversation is being so nice that there's no communication going on. Correct. You guys are the softest. You pussyfoot around everything. None of you make anything clear it in is this nice. house ever. Exactly. We're just in the. It's like the. It's like a Saturday Night Live skit on nice. <laughs> You know, isn't that what you're seeing? Yes. Well, she's and, nice, but now I want to be polite. I see. And I want to be nice, and this is these people are not hillbillies. I'm she, just saying. She buys gifts for other people. To that, that's the way she buys self esteem for herself. Is she pictures herself as a giving person, so much so that she will take care of everybody else except for her own household in order to put on airs that she is this Ooh. kind of person. He, on the other hand, is a wimp and a coward. <laughs> And yes, this is a hard conversation. There's no, make no bones about it. But if you and your wife have sat down and said, here's a goal that we want to get out of debt and you're cranking on it three months, 4,000 bucks, paying off a thousand, $1,200 a month on this debt. There's nowhere that anyone in a situation where the two of you are in sync on baby step two, Mm -hmm. there's not a script where she goes and buys $300 worth of tools. Absolutely not. I don't know where that comes from. She's either trying to figure out if this, um, either it's your birthday and you left that out. She's trying to figure out if this boundary is going to hold. She she wants to know if I do this for you, then it's going to free her to go back to her old ways. Her old ways. This in my house, and if let's flip it around. If me and my wife did this, and I went and bought my wife something for three hundred bucks, and I'm I'm doing that because something like this has happened over the course of my marriage. She got upset, and she should have been upset, not because I bought her gift, but because I violated the covenant that we made that here's a plan that we're going to follow together. And then I put her as the recipient of this, making it her problem, not ours anymore. And that's not – it's not a cool – it's just not cool, right? It's it's manipulative. It's manipulative. That's exactly right. So the the thing is this. um, When you – when she walked in with a gift, you should have said, no. Absolutely not. We've been – we're in agreement. And that would have caught. That would have been a part of a fight that she had started. Mm-hmm. You weren't causing the fight at that moment. No. You were we we were in agreement that we are getting out of debt. Yes. You buying me uh, three hundred dollars worth of stuff is not part of that agreement. Absolutely not. Period. Yes. That's not. That's not only not nice. It's in violation of you broke your word to me. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, and, and but you, but this guy never says anything like that. He says, "Oh, thanks. I'm gonna love these things." And, now, and inside, he's sick. Do I, do I sneak them back over to Home Depot and get the credit? Right. And maybe I'll tell her later. 
Yeah. That, no, dude. This is like when she set the box down the counter, you're like, what? What do we do? Yeah. What? So tonight, sit down and say, hey, we have to have a hard conversation. Um, I'm grateful that you bought me these things, but you and I agreed that we were going to do this. And I'm not grateful that you bought me these things. And that's right. There because you, go. you violated the trust that yes. we had put in each other. Yeah. And so it's more important to me that we work together and that we keep word to each other that to get out, get rid of this debt than it is whether I have some power tools. Yes. Or whether you're generous to me or whether I'm polite to you. And so let's put a list of things that we want to buy and do with each for each other and together in the future. And we're going to keep a running list over the next three years while we get out of debt. Let's keep it there or something. But this is just, it's just a violation, man. And, um, yeah, there's two people who are struggling with their own, what they see in the mirror, man. They're trying to make it work. You know what? I did this too. I, I hadn't even thought about it. You said you'd done this, but I mean, I've been married 40 years, so I've had lots of opportunities to do crap wrong. So <laughs> well, I've, done, I've done this a bunch, Dave. I've well, done this a well, bunch. Because Sharon is a tightwad. Mm -hmm. She does not like to spend money. Yeah. But her, her nature isn't and until she's ready and it's something. But I mean, most of the time, most of the time, her nature is she's a saver and I'm a spender. And I'm also a, um, one of my love languages is just giving, mm -hmm. generosity. And so uh, when we were too broke to do it, I would on her birthday or on an anniversary buy her a dozen red roses, mm -hmm. which is expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know what that costs now. I still do it, but it's cost a lot. Mm -hmm. Now it's crazy. But uh, even then it was like, you know, whatever. I spent a hundred bucks, let's say. Well, a hundred dollars. It's a million dollars and you're broke, right? A hundred dollars. Yeah. And... You know, where are those flowers in a month? Exactly. They're in the trash. You know, and to her, the uh, the sentiment did not keep up with the stupidity. Yeah, that's right. And so she was more concerned about the stupidity than she was the sentiment. And it took her a decade later from that to actually accept flowers hmm. when we can afford them <laughs> and enjoy them. But now she's, you know, she, now she actually can enjoy them. So she got 40 roses on her 40th right which was a lot too but now i can afford to throw them away in a month <laughs> and so now she's not it's not stupid anymore it's, but i back then i violated the same thing this woman did that's right this is the ramsey show On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is my co-host today. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Thomas and Emily are with us. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. Good to have you guys. Great so to be So where here. do you live? Uh, we're from Clifton Park, New York. Okay, which is near? Uh, Albany. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool. Good to have you guys. How much debt have you paid off? Uh, 41000 in six months. Good for you. And your range of income during uh, that time? 70000 to one twenty-five. Good for you. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an accountant. I am uh, an indoor cycling instructor. I work on a farm and I run my own marketing company. Whoa. Okay, so how did you double your income in six months? Uh, I got a big promotion at work uh -huh. and some bonuses along the way. Uh -huh. uh, and then she, her business kind of took off. A couple of websites that she got. Ah. And all just kind of fell into place. Good deal. That's nice. I love it when a plan comes together. So what kind of debt was the 41000 Uh So at that point, it was, I think I had $6,000 left on my car. And then the rest of it was student loans. Uh -huh. How long y'all been married? 
Uh, six months. <laughs> okay. So you got married, had the plan to come home from the honeymoon and attack this. How in the world did you make a weird decision like that and get connected to this Ramsey stuff? So uh, I bought in a long time ago. Um, I was sitting at work, and I was actually, oddly enough, trying to figure out my budget to finance a BMW and get all this different stuff that I wanted to sign up for, the engagement ring. And uh, I just was looking at the numbers. I'm like, this doesn't work. Um, so then I'm scrolling through financial podcasts, as us nerds do, and uh, came across yours, and I was like, wow, I've been wrong the entire time. Mm. And then I kind of binged, listened to your podcast, and then read the book, went through Financial Peace University, and here we are. Okay, and then you get engaged, and so, Emily, you're like, this guy... Uh He's kind of over the top on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he bought into it a long time before I did. He would put it on whenever we were driving in the car, and I was like, "You got to turn this off." <laughs> How smooth, man! Yeah. <laughs> so he That's so subtle. He to be fair, like I ran through a window. To be fair, I had it on one and a half speed, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so it could have it could have been even worse. Sounds like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. and he tried to guess what your answers to people's questions would be before you said it. So I was like, "You're just." That's a good way to flex for her how smart you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably, I probably know what's coming. So what, what, what pushed you over the edge, Emily? Um, well, he proposed, and I was like, well, I'd rather get married to this man than keep my credit card. So I went all in, and, and I cut it up, and I was like, we're going to be on the same page. We're just going to do it. It's a plan. I'll stick to it. And here we are. You don't hear that very often. <laughs> That's just like an act of character. Yeah. That was pretty cool. We need to have her on your show on how to pop properly I, do I'm this. Tell, like, you just solved most of America's issues right there. <laughs> I'd rather stay in relationships, so I just quit being stupid, and then I moved on with my life. Like, that right there, man, heals. Ah, oh, that's yeah. incredible, man. You married well, my brother. Good job. <laughs> married yeah, up, that, for that sure. Was a, that was a mic drop right there. That was beautiful. Because, I mean, the number of people that say... I want to do this, but I also want to do that. I love and, him, and you, but I want my know, couch. Or you know. I really love her, but I need my BMW. Or whatever. Like, you know, <laughs> I love her more, so I'm just going to like quit that. being dumb. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That's I like so it. incredible, man. Just, okay, okay, so you, you go through this plan. You all get after it. That's a lot of money. And you're getting these bonuses. You're getting new websites. And it's like, I got a new website. It's like, cool. Now we can pay off more student loans. <laughs> exactly. That's not, that doesn't feel right, right? So walk us through that journey. Uh, I think – just because we had that mindset going into it because we had started separately. Like I started 40 months ago and I was going through my own journey separate and then she came in. Um, so when we actually had that influx of income and actually we were saving up cash for the wedding and uh, our both our parents helped us out tremendously with the wedding. So we were able to take all that money that we stockpiled to pay and they actually, we put it on all the debt. So it really kind of oh, steamrolled it all. Who are you two? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That was free yeah. money, dude, to go buy a new car with. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Y'all are incredible. Y'all are weird. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Very well done. How's it feel wow. to be free? Uh, awesome. It's weird because every time we, you know, every time I got paid from a client or I got a paycheck, I, I was so used to watching that money go out of the account right away, and now it's just, it's kind of surreal watching it. it. It comes in, it stays, or I can spend it on something that, you know, we budgeted for and that I want to spend it on. So it's yeah. weird, but it's good. You have control of your life now. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well done. All right. You're brand new married. You're unbelievably successful. Very well done. What do you uh, tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Uh, the budget. Staying consistent. I mean, every month your income is going to change like a, with her business. If a website comes in, sometimes they don't. Um, so just when you get the extra money, put it on to whatever your goal is using the snowball. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I mean, it's just staying consistent. And it helps to have a team and, you know, yeah. it, we both kind of had started beforehand and kind of plugged along. But once we were together and, um, I don't know, working at it and consistently doing the budget, um, it just exploded. Yeah. Mm. How old are you guys? Uh, we're 26. Oh, She's much older than me, though. I'm a week older than him. <laughs> <laughs> 26 and you're debt free? Yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Y'all won. <laughs> but m m more than anything, they uh, know how to think together. They know how to dream together. How they to, know how, how to, to execute. Sacrifice. How to execute together. They know how to get on the same page. You know, all, all of these tools that you learn in this process are going to be used throughout your life on other things, too. So it's put your relationship in a completely different place. Dude, I yeah. do relationships for a living, and it's very rare to hear somebody say, I loved him more than my stuff. <laughs> Hang on to that one. Yeah. That's, yeah, she's that's, good. 
Well, and it wasn't, you know, and Emily, I put it on, put words in your mouth, but you didn't do that. The world look at, we have the benefit of seeing your body language and everything. You were not saying, I, I, you know, I gave up my brain. I gave up my right. You're just saying, I agreed with this. I, so I chose. Yeah, I chose and him. I chose yeah. priorities. Yeah. Both. It was, it was a, it was a, a mindful intellectual Beautiful. decision, an yeah. act of my will. It was not a, I have to go along because I'm dumb. It wasn't that at all. I mean, right. we didn't, there's a, this is a bright I'd very, very uh, sharp young this lady wise. saying this. Very cool. Very cool, y'all. And very you, well done. Not good at dating, playing podcast. It's just like a move. <laughs> but hey, it worked. It worked, right? <laughs> yeah, it worked. Well done, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do, doing the right thing the wrong way. But, you know, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Instead of smooth jazz, we're going to listen to <laughs> Dave Ramsey. <laughs> hey, we got a jazz opener. Whatever we do have a jazz. <laughs> we do have a jazz opener. Well done, man. Congratulations. We're proud of y'all. Well done. Thank Who was you. your biggest cheerleaders? Uh, both of our parents were pretty big cheerleaders. I mean, during this time, her parents paid off their mortgage. And oh. I actually got my mom to buy in a little bit here because she saw what we were doing, and she's like, "Hey, that's pretty cool. How did you do that?" And I went through her first budget with her and kind of showed her everything. So she'll be on this stage. I yeah. love it. You're changing. Look forward you're changing yeah. legacies the other way, yeah. right? That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah. Change my family tree both directions. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Good job, you guys. Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. No question about it. You are on the way. Our latest number one bestseller for you. And a copy of Total Money Makeover coming up on its 20-year anniversary and almost 9 million copies sold. So I'll give you a copy of that. You can give it away to somebody and get somebody started. It sounds like you're already evangelizing this stuff <laughs> a little bit anyway. And a Financial Peace University one-year membership. If you haven't been through it, go through it. Dr. John Deloney's in the new videos with me and George and Rachel. And they're the best, best teaching we've ever done. It's really, really strong right now. So Financial Peace University, all that stuff. You said you'd been through it, so maybe you give that to yeah. somebody as yep. well. So whatever you want to do. It's all yours. You can do what you want to with it. Thomas and Emily from New York and the Albany area, 41000 paid off in the first six months of their marriage, making seventy to one twenty-five. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Ready? Ready. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, I can't get it out of my head. The opposite is a lady that called me one time, and she said uh, her fiancé wanted a prenup to protect his classic car. And I said, don't marry him. Absolutely not. This guy loves his car more than he loves you. Yep. This guy's not a keeper. Yep. Uh, so if you're my daughter, I would prevent you from marrying him if it meant his death. <laughs> Stop it. Don't do it. No. And this is quite the opposite. It's the opposite. The opposite. Beautiful. I'm not going to find my security in pieces of plastic. I'm going to find my security in us. And in relationship. In relationship. Let's and do this. And in agreement. Yeah. That is where we both have a vote. It's incredible. Wow. Powerful. This is The Ramsey Show. John Deloney Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Bill's in San Antonio. Hi, Bill. How are you? Hey, Dave. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Man, I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, so I'm 31, been married two years. My wife and I have about $45,000 in student loan debt. Uh, right now, that's all we've got. Um, I work for my family in agriculture, farming, and ranching, and I make about thirty thousand a year. My wife makes about forty. So, um, recently, we've been hammering down on the debt, getting it paid off. We got twenty-five thousand down, got forty-five to go. 
this house has come up. It's owned by my parents. They want to sell it to us. We want to buy it. We need it. Um, but, the you know, we're trying to pay the debt off. So I went to my folks. I asked for a raise. I've been with them five years now. Never had a pay raise in that time. They said, well, why don't you just let us pay off your, your student loan debt? And I said, man, I really, I mean, that's a wonderful gesture, and I appreciate it. But, uh, you know, we've been working really hard to pay this off, and I feel like if I take this money, they're going to maybe there's going to be some strings attached. And, of course, that's just based on our relationship, and that's a different conversation. No, it's not. It's um, the same for, one. It's the exact same one, Bill. Right. Okay. Where there are no strings, yes, you take the gift. Where there are strings, then we have to discuss the strings. How old are you, man? 31. 31. How do they justify – I'm going to play it, put it on them. I'll put it on you. You're 31 years old making $30,000 a year. What are you doing? I work for the family business. No, we understand. I know that. What do you do physically? Why are you taking this? Why are you doing this? You work too hard. You're too smart. Your work ethic is too strong. making two or three times that. Or four. (laughs) Yes, I should. I also have a business degree from Ole Miss. Um, So the reason why I do what I do is because I love it. Um, I'm not working for my parents because I've got no other way. Uh, We raise cattle. We raise sheep. This is my passion. Um, I love my job. And... Uh, I hope to someday have my own place, and this, to me, is the best way to get there. My own place to run my own business is what I mean. How do, How is thirty thousand dollars a year getting you there? Well, it, it, it's very it's slow. <laughs> it's not. It's not, man. So, um, uh, what do they make? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, you have a business degree, uh, right yes, now, you do. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I would say over a million a year. So I'm gonna say this, um, and it's not gonna be pretty, but I'm getting frustrated. Your parents are taking advantage of you. This is strange. Yeah. It's not cool. It's disrespectful. Yeah, y'all, y'all sound like my wife. <laughs> it's disrespectful, and what, what's happening is. It's pitting a relationship. If they can just cut you a forty-five thousand dollar check to wipe your, it's a power play, man. It's a move, yeah. and, and you smelled the move. I, I dude, I, I don't know, man. I get wanting to. Be, I'm from Texas. I get wanting to have a ranch and run the cattle. Those are some of my closest friends in the world. But you can't do that at thirty thousand dollars. You're never going to earn the money to buy your own ranch, or you're playing a thirty year long game with a couple of power brokers that they may give you their ranch someday. It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Go get a job at McDonald's and make thirty grand. At least you can deliver pizzas at night and make another fifteen on top. You're killing yourself yeah. for thirty thousand bucks. Well, you're doing your your, your day to day work. You enjoy doing the day to day work. Um, it's yes, just, sir. But but I, I honestly believe you could manage a ranch for somebody uh, as a you know with their business degree and with your knowledge of the actual uh, events that have to occur on the ranch to win. I mean, you know how to handle the cattle. You know how to per- purchase the cattle, sell the cattle, hand, you know, deal with the issue. You know how to do that. So you could work for someone else as a as a manager and make a hundred grand a year, couldn't you? Uh, maybe not a hundred, but I think I could double my income. But I'd have to move somewhere. And, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. You would. So my point is, if your parents hired someone to do what you're doing, they would have to pay them more than they pay you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, and that's where I say you're getting taken um, advantage if, of. If, so the the, the rule in business, the rule in family business is this: and my kids work for me. Okay, is they get paid what other people doing the job that they are doing get paid, not more because they're family, and not less because they're family. And so I, Rachel Cruz is a Ramsey personality, and Rachel gets paid the same percentages on a book royalty that dr john deloney gets paid as a ramsey personality now she might sell more books or less books and so she might make more or less than he makes but not percentage she's on the exact same comp schedule as ken coleman as george camel as dr john deloney and so that's rachel and so rachel's not being mistreated by me uh working here making less because she's family uh and she's also not uh getting paid more because she's here working as family. Uh, And she does stand to inherit this place. 
<laughs> okay. Yes, sir. So she so she doesn't have to uh, accept thirty thousand dollars a year. Instead, she makes what uh, you know what these other guys make doing this thing here that we're doing. So, and same is true with my son Daniel, who's one of our senior vice presidents and runs runs entree leadership okay and uh so what what does he make the same thing as the other senior vice presidents that are running business units as a percentage of their revenues is how they all get paid and so y you should be paid what someone else that didn't didn't belong to your family would be paid but not necessarily more and so no i do not want the forty-five thousand. and yes i have to rethink whether i can stay here at all right well that's pretty much what i was thinking dave Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, but, and, and, and here's the thing. If mom and dad were making no profit and you were joining in on the family business trying to get the thing turned around and putting your shoulder to the wheel. Totally different. That's a different game. But they're, yeah. they're probably making a million dollars a year. Well, and I so, mean, I know what they make because I know what their livestock is worth. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and so... You know, and, and you're not, you know, you're not coming in here and asking for more than market rate, but I'm no longer willing to accept less than market rate. And yeah. if the promise of this inheritance is not enough to keep me. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Because it's a yeah. bad arrangement in the short term. And that, that arrangement comes with strings. Yeah. Of all kinds. Yeah, and it, that's, um, so it probably would be um, good for your mom and dad relationship with you good for your relationship with you good for your your wife's relationship for you for you to work on another ranch for a while yeah you don't have to cut strings you don't have to burn bridge you have to cut strings but you don't have to burn bridges yeah and just get get, you, get your get your marketplace savvy established your value in the marketplace established and then we can discuss maybe in two or three years how to come back and under what circumstances you can come back uh, and it's going to be market rate then with a plan towards succession in the business that's laid out. Guys, yeah. Yeah. Y'all recommend that I have this conversation again with them. Um, now that I've listened to you and I'm probably a little bit more confident. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, obviously you guys don't know them from Adam, but yeah. you, I mean, is it words? Another word? Yeah, it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything. I think you tell them I'm going to start. I'm going to reach out to seek this this amount of money. This is what my time and my experience and my knowledge and my value is. And I want to put y'all on notice. I'm going to be looking for this type of work across the across the southeast region, right? Southwestern region. Southwestern. Yeah, yeah wherever you happen to be. Yeah. But the uh, yeah, I, I um, but I, I you know. It would it, if you want to stay there, and they suddenly want to clean this thing up, then that'd be okay. But I, yeah. I be honest with you, I, I think if they were going to do that, they would have already done it. Right. And my experience has been kids who grow up in this type of relationship um, undervalue themselves because they've been undervalued. And your wife, you mentioned it, she sees it. She yeah. knows what her husband's worth. And she's not just mad at your mama. No. I want you to see what you're worth, my brother. Yeah. That's a long answer to no, don't take the money. <laughs> yeah. So fun. <sighs> wow. Interesting. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story.
live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 825 5225. Brittany's in Chicago. Hi, Brittany. How are you? Hi, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so, my question is actually about anxiety. Um, I just finished Baby Step 3, and I'm scared to move on to Baby Step 4 through 6, specifically Baby Step 6. Um, I'm a single mother of two, and I'm just scared that I don't have enough saved, and I'm worried about putting money where I can't usually access it. Um, So I'm just wondering if you have any advice on getting past this fear. Have you had seasons of insecurity in your past? (laughs) Yes. You're you're a single mom. How long have you been a single mom? (laughs) I was trying to be Um, facetious. I didn't ask that too seriously. Yes. You've you've been through it before, right? Yes. Did you grow up struggling? Absolutely. I'm... The daughter of a single mother as well. Okay. So think of it this way. You, you ever been going somewhere on your GPS on your phone and somebody puts a pin in it for you to tell you where to go? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your body has put a pin in not having enough. Mm-hmm. And it is constantly trying to solve for not having enough. And it will continue to move the finish line on you. That's why it's real important when we're doing the baby steps is that we don't go by feelings. We go by the data. Okay. You got six Mm -hmm. months. What do you do for a living? Um, I work for a nonprofit. Okay. Uh, How long have you been there? Yeah. There specifically not too long, about a month. If you lost that job, how quick could you find a job? Um, 30 30 seconds, five minutes. (laughs) Exactly. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right? So here's the deal. The data tells us that within six months, you'd be fine. Within Mm -hmm. one month, you'd be fine. Your bills would be covered. You got six months to sit on, right? And so Mm -hmm. we're going to lean into, and here's the thing about anxiety is we want to run from it and then it spins faster on us. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn and face it and walk right in the middle of it. I want you to lean into the next step on this plan. Maybe you're going to four, five, and six here. Lean into it. Go right towards it. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to teach our body that at one time there wasn't enough. Now there is. And when your body realizes you're driving, you're in control, you're running the show, and you've got the – you're not just flexing. You're not just like, yeah, yeah. You're you're not just some moron college kid, right? you got six months in the bank. You've got a great job. You've got consistency. You've got fill in the blank. It goes, oh, okay, cool. She's driving. We don't have to sound the alarms anymore. Now we're good. See what I'm saying? And it's going to take a process. You're going to have to learn this over a couple of years. I'm good, right? You're going to ask yourself when that alarm kicks off, uh, what are you trying to teach me? Uh, oh, we're good. We got this one. And you're going to go, okay, good. So, Brittany, um, there's a guy named Mike Todd that has a wonderful quote. He says, um, I've never been poor. I've only been broke. Poor is a state of mind. Hmm. And when you get the tapes running in your head, either from your childhood or from this time you've had starving to death as a single mom struggling, or both, when the tapes run in your head, uh, you can get stuck in a mental cycle that says there's never going to be enough. I'm always going to be short. And it's kind of this dark cloud hanging over you. And and so it's kind of a thing. It's a mental exercise to, uh, to change your uh, perspective from one of, oh, God, what's going to happen next to, oh, God, what's going to happen next? <laughs> you know, what good thing, you know, it's, a, it's an abundance thing, but that's just a decision to do that and to start practicing it is what John's talking about there. And um, then that will set you free. So uh, you, you've probably had the experience, I know I have, where I'm all spun up about something and then I actually get to looking at the detail and I go, oh, don't sweat the small stuff. And by the way, this is small stuff. And so, uh, and then you, because you, you kind of pan back 
or you dive in, one of the two, and you see that it's going to be okay. And there's this kind of thing happens. Like, um, you know, the time your kid got lost in the grocery store? <laughs> it's happened to every one of us, right? Right. And for a minute, they're they're already trafficked, and they're in the Middle East somewhere in mm-hmm. your mind, right? And your yeah. brain goes completely bonkers until they turn the corner holding the stock clerk's hand with this stupid grin on their face and you go oh okay you were just stuck in the green beans i got it okay holding the lollipop yeah yeah yeah. and um yeah now we're all okay right but there was a moment there that you were spun up way beyond the actual situation fearing the worst and that's human nature and that's exactly what you're doing with this does that make sense yes absolutely so here's the hard hard thing about anxiety it's a choice moving forward And what do I mean by choice? That means I'm going to work on getting some sleep at night so that my body is at its tip-top shape. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to move my body. I'm going to have relationships with people. I'm going to do the things that are going to give my body's alarm systems. They're going to be all tuned up. And I'm going to choose to, like Dave said, my identity is no longer I'm poor. My identity is I'm enough. And I have busted it. To get a six-month emergency fund, now I'm going to start saving for house. Now we're going to start planning for college. Now I'm going to start doing retirement. I'm going to start set, pl- planting seeds I'm for my baby family. baby steps millionaire in the making. Now we're off to the races because that's who I am. So we're going to create an identity and we're going to work backwards from there. You got it? Got it. You are incredible. You know what? The beautiful part about this whole thing is uh, you actually could – you recognized it was there. And my dad used to say that to me when I was growing up. He said, he would say, okay, uh, recognizing a problem is 90% of solving it. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it's just execution. Now you you got to go do it. Yeah. 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 He also said that about work. He said, <laughs> I identified that the basement needed to be clean, so I've done most of the work now. Yeah. You go do the work. <laughs> Good dad. That's right. I well, think that was that. a trick. Of course <laughs> it was. I worked really hard identifying it. And, uh, go get Thinking it of it's half the work. That's exactly and I've right. already done half the work, so you go do the other half. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, but yeah, that, that's, uh, but that's the thing. We, we all have this stuff, and that's why we always say around here, personal finance is 80% behavior. Because if I can get this guy in the mirror, this gal in your mirror to believe again and behave in such a way that we're going to win, then guess what we end up doing? Winning. There's a self-fulfilling prophecy that's tied into every bit of this. And it's a poverty mentality, a scarcity mentality versus a wealthy person's mentality, an abundance mentality. And it is a series of thoughts and training that causes your brain and your body to do these things. This is The Ramsey Show. talking heads about fear in the real estate market and uh, that the housing market's going to crash. It's all that coming down, Dave. 2008, it's all coming down. It's the robot, coming robots, down. The robots are taking over. <laughs> uh, but you're not hearing the truth. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can't make decisions. John talks about this all the time. Uh, when you're in the middle of fear, facts are your friends. You need facts. And here they are. In 2008, there was a huge supply of homes. As a matter of fact, 3.8 million homes on the market in 2008. You know how many houses are on the market today? 800,000. One-fourth the inventory now. One-fourth. Oh, and new housing starts in 2006, 7, 2 million. Today, 1.3 million. So we don't have new housing supply. We don't have used housing supply. And uh, guess what? We got twice as many buyers twice the demand for less than half the supply. 
we're not going to have a housing crash. Now, ha- prices are going, are, you know, they're, they're going to slow down. This ridiculous increase is going to stop. And maybe the auction that we've been having where every house goes on the market in 85 offers come in is, on the, is not going to happen. But it's going to slow down. We are heading into a, a light recession or something very close to one or something like that where we're actually in the third quarter now. So we'll just know whether Q2 was a recession or not soon. But um, if it is a recession, it's not going to be much of one. I thought it was going to be, and now they're saying maybe it didn't. So we'll see when the numbers come out in a week or so. But bottom line is the market slowed down, but it is not crashing. You do need, if you're a buyer, a good real estate agent in your corner that knows what they're doing. And you do need a good real estate agent in your corner that knows what they're doing if you're a seller, because they're going to explain to you your house is not going to sell in one minute or 17 minutes. It's going to sell in 90 to 120 days, which is when houses have sold most of history. Just only this recent weirdness that we've been in, could you put your house up for sale and get much more than it was worth for it and get multiple offers for that? You and I have a friend that it's what they wait 36 hours and they freaked out and dropped the price way down for them to buy the house. Crazy. What are you doing? Crazy. After 36 hours, you went, hadn't sold, hadn't sold. Oh drop God. the price, drop the price. Nice. So you sellers have to have somebody talk you out of your tree, right? Yes. Because you're up in the tree chasing a cat. So you need a good real estate agent in your corner. Ramsey Trusted Agents are ELPs, endorsed local providers. They're incredible. They're high-octane, high-protein agents with proven track records. They can help you navigate this market, and you should have somebody like that in your corner. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Get a good, high-end real estate, high-quality real estate agent in your corner to buy or sell right now, and it is a good time right now to do either. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a year ago, it was a bad time to be a buyer, Hmm. but now is actually a pretty good time to be a buyer. A year ago, it was a great time to be a seller. Now it's just a good time to be a seller. So good time to be a buyer, good time to be a seller. It's a weird market because you usually have to say one or the other has kind of got the advantage right now. This fairly even playing field in most markets. Now, some of these markets are still heated up. Uh, they're still white hot, and some of these markets are slowing down dramatically because they got other stuff other than just national things going on. Um, some of the folks around the oil fields in Texas, um, they ain't working. Yep. Yeah, and pretty slow. It's, it's hurting those markets. Yeah. Hurting those markets. That, but that's a local economic thing. That, that they're going to dump that's not it. Affecting, that's not affecting Kansas City. Yeah, but they take those local stories and they dump them in the national news and put big red ticker tape around them and say, breaking news, and you think your market's falling apart. Yeah, and it's not. No. Yeah. And I, I, I think, Dave, it's so important, whether it's real estate, whether it's um, – I've been working with Dr. Norton. Lane Norton is a brilliant guy. Um, you met him there in Orlando. Gave me a shirt that said, data is greater than feelings. I, he's working with me on some – weightlifting stuff and some nutrition stuff i wanted to feel like i this and he's like dude you got to just follow the program just follow this the data and stop like yeah but i feel like just follow and dude it, it's working and then the same conversation we have with people about their money i feel like it just follow the program same with rental ha- renting a house whenever you get emotional about something slow down and follow the data follow the facts man and if you don't have them get somebody who's wise in your corner and you're always going to make better decisions when you're looking at real numbers it's just amazing how we don't do that matt is in new york city hey matt welcome to the ramsey show hey guys thanks for taking my call how are you better than we deserve brother what's up uh nothing much so i'm just trying to figure out um i have about five thousand uh, dollars to my name right now. Good for you. Um, I do. That's in a checking account. Um, I currently do not have a savings account, but I'm looking to take you know, portions of my salary and my paycheck from my job, um, you know, and put that away to start saving up money because I'm looking to get engaged in about two years, um, and then eventually move down, get married, and move down south to Florida. Um, so I'm looking to have you found her what, yet? Yes, I, yes, I have. Why would it take two years? Getting... What are you doing, man? Shh. Two years. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm only uh, I'm only 22, but um, you know, just looking to just looking to stay here. A bit have you got a job? Family. Yes, I do. Right, right now. I'm How a old is she? Investigator. She's 22 as well. Okay. You're a private investigator. Yes, sir. So what? What? Where was the rule that said you can't get married before 24? I'm from Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all. Uh, 
you know, I was, I was, I was raised, I was raised with, you know, with my, uh, with my father and my parents, I was raised to always ask, um, you know, ask your, ask your father for her hand in marriage and whatnot. That don't take two um, years. But, <laughs> I know. Well, uh, <laughs> her parents, her parents are a bit strict. Um, she's 22. I mean, think, Who cares what her parents they are? They don't get a vote, dude. Right. Exactly. That's, that's exactly, that's exactly what I said to her. Yeah. Um, so I think you course, go talk they, to her dad and, and, uh, go ahead and get married. That's my opinion. But what am I, what am I, I don't think you need to wait two years. It's just unhealthy. I think you need to, uh, you know, if this is the, if this is the right thing, let's go ahead and go forward. If it's not, then get off the ladder. But, um, you know, if, uh, if she is not mature enough at 22 years old to live on her own as a woman, then you got other issues. Right. But if you, and if you aren't. But that that's a different thing. But that's a uh, no. There's no rule anyway. So all of that to say, uh, five thousand dollars to get engaged is great. I think that's a good start. We got a little bit of a beginner emergency fund. You have any debt you need to clean up? Uh, no debt at all. Does she? No. Nope. Wow, you guys are y'all are in great shape then. So she has a job. You yeah, have a job. You have five thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. And so uh, I. You know, is, is there something in your life that makes you a bad guy that her dad should say, no, you can't marry her? Uh, not, a, not at all. I mean, her, her dad, her dad treats me like I'm his own son. Okay. Um, you know, both, both of her parents do her, both her mom you, and her dad. Do you wear sleeves um, most of the time or do you cut them off? <laughs> no, I wear, I wear sleeves most of the time. All right. That's, that's good. I'm just saying, if somebody, if a guy comes to my house to to marry my daughter, Josephine, and he's oh, going to cut and off he cut shirt? The sleeves off a shirt, who cuts sh- leaves off a shirt? Lots of people. That's what I'm asking him. Is he one of those guys? Absolutely. I didn't even know what you're talking about. He got it. He knew. Oh my God! You have a absolutely, mustache? Absolutely not. Uh, slightly, slightly. That's but, the uh, problem, I, dude. I, you got to shave. I'm tell. I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. <laughs> okay, so if the roles were reversed. And this was your daughter, and this guy that looks and acts like you came and asked for her hand. Would you grant it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Why wouldn't um, Why wouldn't you? Like, no, why wouldn't you? If you I, were her dad, and some guy comes, it's your daughter someday. This role is going to happen to you, right? And and he comes. And is he going to? Would you be happy to put her hand in this young man's hand? I would, but there would be there would be some, um, you know. I mean, <clears throat> I feel like her. I feel like her dad wants me to have a uh, have a steady, you know, have a steady job where I'm making where I'm making a, I don't know, a decent amount of money. Because right now, with with the private investigation work, I'm making about eighteen fifty an hour. So go get a better job. Yeah, do both. Do that and, on the then side. Go, and then go get the girl. Don't wait two years. That's a couple of old men talking right there. Make it happen, Matt. This is the Ramsey Show. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Scott is with us. Scott is uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina with Hope City Church. The church is debt-free, we hear. Scott, tell us about this. Hey, hey, Dave. Thanks for having us, man. This is awesome. We're all excited. But, yeah, the church is debt-free. We saw some light at the end of the tunnel. And we cast some vision for it. We pushed it. We got everybody on board. And like the church, God did some amazing things. So, yeah, we're debt free and can be generous as we possibly can be. Yeah, it's a whole lot easier to help people in the community when you don't have payments to the bank. 
That's awesome, yes, man. Congratulations. Yeah. So are you, are you the pastor, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Lead pastor, started the church in 2011. Wonderful. Very cool. Yep. Okay, so tell us what happened here. How much debt was there, and where did the vision come from to clear it, and how did you all do it? So in 2016, we purchased some land. We built a $4 million facility, and we it's a beautiful place. We're here. About two years ago, we saw this thing getting down to right at $2 million. You know, COVID is happening around there, but we're like, you know what? I think right now is the time to get out of debt. We cast a vision to our staff. Our staff was unified in it. Our leadership team was unified in it. And the church jumped on board. And as soon as we started casting a vision to get out of debt, to pay off this last $2 million, Dave, I can't tell you, like, we had someone give us a million-dollar gift. Whoa! We have, Whoa. Yeah, we had another person give us a $225,000 gift. We had some excess land that we were ever probably going to use. We sold that off for another two hundred and five thousand. So this thing really started to snowball. And then, like I, you know, casting the vision to people who don't even come to our church. I had friends who I play some golf with. They they would just give us, you know, a gift here and there, and it all just added up until right after Easter this year. That was our final push, and we only had to pay off like three hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. And when you're talking four million to three hundred fourteen thousand, that seems like just really nothing. And we wiped out that remaining three hundred fourteen thousand, and now we're debt free. So wow. it's it's been an amazing ride over the last year or so. Wow. Well, the fear around COVID for churches, like for businesses and for individuals, was that the that the income was going to shut down and uh, a lot of churches that we've worked with have told us that their income actually went up during covid did you yeah. all experience that yeah we did dave you know we had a couple of options that we could have gone into sort of a recluse mode or we could have taken a couple other options that really would have taken the focus off of who our provider is and we just we didn't go that direction we said generosity is one of our core values it doesn't matter what kind of season we're in we've got to continue to be generous and god just provided and he's been faithful and you know it's it's something you've heard all over. It's nothing new, but you cannot outgive God, and and we keep trying to do it, but we keep failing at it, and so <laughs> we're just going to continue to roll in that direction. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. That is wonderful. Well, as as you know, the leader and founder uh, of that organization, you probably experienced the same thing I did before giving went up. There, we were in the middle of this quarantine and this shutdown, and uh, you know. You had to look at this and go, man, if we didn't have this debt, we'd be in a whole different place. And so this is my wake-up call. That had to be part of yeah. this formula. Yeah, it definitely was. Really, you know, not knowing what tomorrow holds, you know, not having to pay the bank. Our our note was roughly $14,000 a month, and we're not a mega church. You know, wow. we, we have about 600 people that worship with us on a Sunday morning, so you know, one wrong move, one wrong statement, uh, it, it just could go south quick. So we were just like, let's get this thing out of debt. Let's put this $14,000 into the community to continue to truly make an impact in this community for, for the Lord. And that's just what we're doing. That's powerful. Yeah, that's $14,000 worth of help you can be to people around there yeah. that, that was just going to a stupid bank. That's so wonderful. I'm there so proud go. of y'all. Well yeah. done, Pastor. Very well and, done. And Scott, I wrote this down. The antidote to fear is generosity. Mm -hmm. yeah. What if when we all got scared and nervous and anxious, we immediately didn't run to the mirror and say, what about me? What about me? But we looked around and said, who could we serve right now? I wonder what our yep. culture would look like if we were generosity focused when we got scared instead of inward focus. Good for you, man. What an example. Amen. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. I, I predict a uh, spike in growth at your church following this. Uh, I think your your people are going to be bolder, more courageous. You probably will be in the pulpit. Uh, yeah. Not that you were wimpy before. Yeah, but. But you can, yeah, you can do all the sermons now that you've been wanting to say. <laughs> yeah, right. but uh, you know, it, it's uh, it does change. It changes a business person the way we run our business. We're more bold. Uh, yeah. we, we've got a, a little more flex 
that we didn't have when we don't have the bank hanging around our neck and it, it, it affects the pulpit. The other thing that you'll end up doing is you'll end up infecting these families with this mm-hmm. debt-free disease and they will go yeah. on and prosper inside of your congregation. And uh, yes, so you can't help but do it. It's, you can't stop it from yes. happening because of what you've done. I'm so proud of y'all. This is such a Thank wonderful you. statement in what you've done. Congratulations. Very well Thank done. You. Yeah. Uh, any, any advice for pastors out there of thousand member and under congregations that are sitting on uh, seven figures of debt? They're sitting on a couple million dollars in debt. Any advice for them? Yeah, I think you really have to know first. You have to be the leader. You know, I, you've heard some of the gurus out there in leadership talks. They say good leaders go first, but great leaders come back and take others with them. I think this is huge for us because we can tell people now, hey, we've done this. If we, we've done it, we will show you how you and your family can do it as well. And so it's just it really gives us cred, you know, credibility that we, we want this for you because there is a feeling, you know, I know it's not all about feelings, but there is a freedom that you feel in your heart, your soul, and your mind when you drive into this place every day and knowing that it's paid off. You know, with your homeowners, you say the grass is always greener now that it's paid off. I remember the first day, Monday morning, coming back to this place after we had paid it off, man, the parking lot was cleaner. The, the building was brighter. I mean, I'm not kidding. It was free. And, and every family that not only here at our church, pastors, wherever, I, I want them to be able to experience that because we weren't made to be just held down and in bondage. Yeah. Beautiful. Well done, Pastor. So proud of you Thank guys. You. So uh, I understand we got a video of you whole, of your whole church congregation doing a debt-free scream, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we will cue that up. And again, as we cue that up, congratulations. Our love to you and all of your team and our congratulations to you. We're very, very proud of you. All right. Fire all right. that up, guys, in the booth. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. one. We're debt-free. That's how it's done, boys and girls. Woohoo! A church wide debt free scream. I love it. Very well done. Yeah, I love the idea of the bride of Christ not being in chains. For real, man. And I love the idea of that $14,000 a month. Now they're going to look at that and say, who are we going to bless this week? Yeah. Who are we going to bless this week? Some and single the, mom needs some help. Some hungry kid needs help. The church can be some about the business of the thing, church, right? Which is minister, loving people. Gosh. And you know what? I'm sorry, boys and girls, but that takes money. It does. It takes money. And that's $14,000 a month and not going to some stupid bank. And if you're a stupid bank, I'm sorry. You're just a stupid bank. And if you're a church, get out of debt, man. That's so cool. Get out of debt for your people. That is so beautiful. Well done. That's incredible. Frees you up to be able to do and be who you is supposed to be. I love it. Well done, Pastor. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Diane Ackerman said, I don't want to get to the end of my life and find that I lived just the length of it. I want to have lived the width of it as well. Ooh, that's good. I like that. Very good. Good stuff. Joe's with us. Joe is in Chicago. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm talking to you is a good one. 
Thank you, sir. How can we help? Uh, I've got a question about what to do with a, a gift that's currently sitting in a mutual fund. So uh, I'm 19 years old, and I have one year of college under my belt. And uh, due to my generous parents, a good scholarship, and a relatively cheap school, I'm cash flow in college with my on-campus job and then saving what I make in the summer. Good for you. But uh, What are you studying? Thank you. Uh, I am taking a major in business information systems, and it's a master's program as well for public accountancy. Wow. Good Very for cool, you. Man. Good, good, good field. How can we help? So uh, when I was born, my kind and generous great aunt set aside some money for me, which uh, peaked at about $3,000, but has since fallen to around 2500 Now, uh, if I was given this in cash, I wouldn't invest it, because right now the goal is just to pile up cash till I graduate. But uh, when I talked to her about pulling it out, she uh, voiced some concerns about, uh, about pulling it because the market's down. And uh, I was trying to balance uh, pulling it out, which I think would be a good idea. Why do you think uh, that would be a good idea? Teach. You don't need the money today. No, I don't. But if I had the money in cash, I wouldn't invest it. That's a fair uh, uh, assumption. I don't disagree with that. Uh, if you call me and had the money in cash in your situation, I would have you pile it up just to make sure you graduate. Sounds like you've got our answers on this show dialed in. I'm sorry? It sounds like you listen to the show and you know how we answer questions. Yeah, I listen every day. <laughs> okay. Uh, all your all right. shows. So, I mean, because you're, 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 you know, I'm, I'm hearing my words. So uh, yeah. uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I'm honored by that. Yeah. So you're right. Thank you. If you called me at 19 years old and you had $5,000 or $3,000 cash sitting in the middle of the table and said, I want to put it in mutual funds, I would say don't because I want you to graduate debt-free first. And you've got it mapped out where you can without using this money probably, but just in case I would use it as an insurance policy. Okay? Uh, okay. And so you're, you're right. I would do that. And um, that's what you're saying. Uh in this case, the money is not in the middle of your kitchen table. It is already in the market, and your aunt is actually right. It's the wrong time to pull it yep. um, because, you know, with the market, uh, it went down. You know, we were technically in a bear market, probably not technically now, but whatever. It's down a bunch either way since the first of the year, and I don't think it's going to stay down throughout your college career, and you don't need the money today, so I probably would ride this thing back up. I kind of gonna right. agree with your aunt here, which I usually wouldn't do. I, I admit, <laughs> I admit that. I admit that. Okay, I usually wouldn't do. Right, or if you. you told me that I have to have this money to keep from borrowing money to go to school, I would tell you cash it out in oh, a heartbeat. Yeah, no, that's not happening. That, that would be in a heartbeat. I mean, I'm sorry the market's down. Yeah. You just need the money. But uh, but right now you have the luxury of not having to cash it out while the market's down, and that's your aunt's point, and I tend to agree with her. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, so, but I, I, man, I really appreciate that you had thought through what we were going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my, my understanding is when the market's down, you cash out, you're solidifying the loss. And so if it goes down at some point, you either got to in general, cut your losses. In general, you never sell or when it's it down. Because, right. Because you, what we call lock in your losses. Right. Uh, solidifies the word you've been, yeah. you're locking them in you're you're promising yourself you're going to lose you're not just haven't just lost on paper now you really lost right when you cash it in while it's down so if you don't have to take it out while it's down it's the exact wrong time to take it out mm -hmm. um but if you have to you just have to <laughs> i mean it's just part of the it just sucks but uh but yeah i i you know i'm gonna ride it back up and and let it get back up in that three thousand range then i might cash it out yeah and just as a matter of safety, and you might, I might miss out on some upward returns. That seems a little backward to say that, but I'm sure that's consistent. But either way, it's just what I would do. And it's not a lot of money. It's not going to make or break your college career, probably. It's not like thirty thousand or a hundred thousand that's gone down to seventy-five thousand. We're talking three grand that's gone down to twenty-five hundred. That's true. We're, we're right. playing with we're playing with house money too. Well, so. And so let me let me. I have a problem with that. So if I worked and earned three thousand bucks and put it in there and it drops 500 bucks i feel a psychological angst that is different than if somebody gave me three thousand bucks and it's dropped down because that's house money mm -hmm. but i don't know that that's the right way to look it's at not. it it's not three thousand bucks is three thousand bucks is three thousand bucks where no matter where it came from that's right that's that's I mean, my problem i gotta get over know, and, and um 
the only thing you don't want to do is dishonor the giver here. Correct. But it didn't sound like the aunt was being controlling. It sounded like she was just advising. Being wise, yeah. Just advising and yeah. saying, uh, I didn't sense that from him anyway. Yeah. So interesting. Good discussion. Mm-hmm. Rich is with us. Rich is in Phoenix. Hi, Rich. How are you? Hi, Dave and John. Honored to talk to both of you. You too. How can we help? So a quick snapshot of my situation. Um, I'm 45 years old, and uh, my wife and I have been married for about two years, just over two years, and uh, we became debt-free last year. Um, Both had a little bit of car debt coming into our marriage, and we paid it off really quickly. And um, I've got about 111,000 sitting in a retirement account, and we have our emergency fund saved up. So I'm just kind of at that point where, if you were in my shoes, what would you do, Dave? <laughs> uh, you mean in the baby steps or what? Yeah, I, I'm I'm debating on jumping right into step four uh, with 15 uh, percent. But my wife and I were talking about it that we don't want to skip over three B, and I, I just don't know if there's like so you're wanting to buy a house. My, my, Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, well, I mean, what if you took two years to work on Baby Step 3B and did not put money into retirement? Okay. And you built up a good down payment. What does that do to you versus putting 15% during that two years into there? How much of it, how much will that affect your, you know, your down payment? What's your household income? Uh, just over 100000 Okay. So it's uh, 15000 a year swing, $30,000 right. swing on how much is in your down payment. Mm-hmm. If you put 15% away, you're going to have 30000 less in two years, correct? Correct. In in your down payment fund? Correct. Yeah. So, um, you know, can we get to a good down payment doing that? And would we rather have a smaller down payment and do that? Or would we rather... 3B is kind of optional how much you lean into baby step four while you're doing it. We let you decide that. Uh, we suggest you don't go zero into baby step four for more than three years while you're doing your down payment okay. saving. But uh, if you want to do partial, if one of you's got a match, sometimes people do that. Uh, like one of you's got a 4% match. So you put in 4% to get the match, and we do a partial baby step four while we're working on our down payment in 3B. And then as soon as the down payment's done, boom, we're at 4, 5, 6, which is 15% kids' college and house. So once you've done that. But while we're working on this down payment during this three-year state of flux, it can be zero to 15% going into four, into baby step four your choice. There's not a wrong answer. It's how, how do you guys want to work this stuff? How much do you want to lean into it? Um, but I would, you're asking what I would do. I would lean toward, um, I, I, I would lean in, in, in the direction of buying a house because I don't think houses are going to go down in value. And I've spent the last several weeks being criticized for saying that, but, <laughs> um, you know, such is life. Um, some of my uh, predictions come out crystal clear correct, and some of them I was just wrong. Mm-hmm. So this one I'm not wrong on, though. Um, so <laughs> there's way too much data on this one. This is not just a Dave gut feeling. There's just data. So anyway, yeah, I, I'm buying a house. That's what I, that's if, what I would do. If you're in this market, I'm going to save up as fast as I can, and I'm going to buy a house because I think they're going to go up next year 4 or 5%, and next year 4 or 5%, and the next year 4 or 5%. And that means 15%, 20% up three, four years from now. Yeah. So I would buy, you know, as quick as you can get the down payment saved and do your 15-year fixed where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. Good job, Dr. John Deloney, Austin, Ben, Zach, Andrew, James, and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. 